You are watching Access LaPorte County Channel 97. Coming up next, the April 6, 2022 meeting of the LaPorte County Commission. You can find information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good morning. I'm so glad to see such a full house this morning. Uh, welcome to the LaPorte County Commission uh, meeting on Wednesday, April 6th. Uh, we will start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to sing the national anthem. Yeah. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Matias? Present. Commissioner Brzezinski? Present. Commissioner Haney? Present. All counted for. Thank you, sir. Next, we'd like to consider the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Uh, Madam President, I do have uh, two additions to the agenda today under 11A uh, for the purchase of the um, parcel in Michigan City for the EMS space. We're going to add the additional parcel, the secondary parcel on Wabash Street. And also under 11B to add the position of a facilities director. Uh, and I would make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the agenda as agended. I'm sorry, the agenda as amended. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Let's, let, let's uh, second the oh, first I portion. You said, I and then, you second. No. no. Okay. Let's so second the first portion and then okay. vote on the amended. Right. So second. Okay. We have a second um, on the um, on the motion to amend the agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, and so the uh, agenda has been amended. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have uh, approval of the March 16th minutes. Motion to approve a motion. as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the agenda as presented uh, for March 16th uh, Commissioner meeting minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, motion has been approved. Uh, next on the agenda, we have the consideration of claims, um, the, the uh, payroll and operating expenses. Payroll ending 325, 1254825 $1,254,825.13. Operating expenses claims is one million four hundred eighteen thousand six hundred eighty-six dollars and fifty-five cents. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the claims as presented. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And for clarification, for people that aren't aware, these claims, uh, the payroll, of course, that speaks for itself. Pay our employees. The uh, operating expenses. These are things that have been approved by the county council, uh, and these are a summary of what we spent this month. Uh, and you rest assured the commissioners get these in advance. We review every claim to make sure that uh, what we're paying, make sure that it's legitimate. We, re we approve every one. Once we review them and we approve them, we trust that our auditor will pay these bills as ordered by the commissioners. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second to approve uh, all claims as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have public comment. And because we have such a, a large and wonderful group this morning, I wanted to uh, uh, ask two things. One is that those of you that are here from Meadowview Estates um, uh, slash NOAC, uh, we have you on the agenda uh, under uh, old, old business um, 10B. So uh, be, we have a few uh, technical advisors who are here to present. So we'd like to hold that public comment so that you can hear the presentation, and then you'll have time to ask questions, make comments, uh, voice your concerns, etc. Um, so under public comment um, at this time, I would like to open the floor uh, to anyone who has comments. Please remember that our, our uh, code of conduct is that we ask for people to be respectful and civil in their in their discourse. Uh, we try to limit. Uh, your time to three minutes, but we don't run a clock, uh, so do your best to, um, to 
keep it as as brief as you can, but we will not um, we will not get the hook out if you go over three minutes. Um, anyone who would like to appear, uh, we'll start with the room and then we'll go to Zoom. Anyone who would like to uh, issue some public comment, please feel free to come up, introduce yourself and your address, please. Good morning, commissioners. <clears throat> My name is Jackie Dermody and I am here on behalf of Family Advocates. I would like to first thank the county for its support of Family Advocates over the years. You are an invaluable partner to the programming that we provide and we appreciate it. So Mr. Friedman, he is a board member for us. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, too. So as I'm sure you're aware, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and Family Advocates has decided to kind of take the theme of Paint the Town Blue. And we have reached out to businesses, and um, they have been putting blue hearts in their windows, and we've got bows on the lampposts of the port and Michigan City, and we have signage, all in an effort to raise awareness with um, the community. So today, I am here to present you with a blue bow. Um, we have them everywhere. They, they last. They're really, they're just standing through the rain. It's great. Um, I would like to add one thing. Because it's um, Child Abuse Prevention Month, we have partnered with Doombrook. And on Thursday, April 7th, which is tomorrow, morning, tomorrow at 6 o'clock at the LaPorte Library, we have um, arranged for um, a member of the prosecutor's office, police department, um, family advocates, Doombrook, Health Link, um, I think that might be it, to be available for 90, we're going to be there from 6 to 7.30 to share resources and to answer questions and just be available to have conversations with anybody in the public that has, you know, questions about what to do or how do things work. As well, we're going to be doing that in Michigan City on April 28th at the library from 6 to 7.30. So I just want to get that out there. We'd love to see the public come. So I'm going to kind of get this to you. Sure. As well, I made some ribbons for everybody, and I will um, each give each one of you one to um, maybe wear during the month of the day. Thank you. Jackie, thanks so much for coming today. Um, as a former uh, Duber board member and a former CASA volunteer, um, I really value what you do, and the, your organization plays a critical role in our community. So thank you for that. You want to get to the mic so the public can hear you. We are always looking for volunteers. Um, you can go to our website, LaPorteFamilyAdvocates.com. You can sign a form, and we will be in touch with you. Or you can call 219-324-3385. I know Doombrook's looking. I mean, everybody is always looking for volunteers. So thank you. Great class. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Any other members of the public who wish to speak at this time? Wouldn't be a meeting if I wasn't here. <laughs> that is true, Mr. Beach. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Randy Beach, 4177 West Schultz Road. Uh, six years and nine months ago, I was introduced to the Port County Inner Workings. This was in the form of deception. The falsehood of a man in a dream home. In the many years since the room started, I have been misled, I have been misguided, and I have been lied to. I have spent many hours and many dollars at trying to stop a mining operation operating on land connected to mine. This mine is helped in its daily operation by elected and appointed. Helped by closing blind eyes to wrongdoing. Helped by prepared, preparing paperwork that is erroneous at best. Helped by not following clear and precise zoning code, uh, a zoning code book that clearly states industrial operations must have a variance to operate. I could continue what the code book says, but it's been proven in the last 10 months. It doesn't matter to me. Since the first week of July 2021, I stood up here, and during my three minutes of time, I told you I would continue coming back until this gets resolved. I am a persistent person. I expected this to be accomplished by now. I was wrong. I will continue to attend these meetings and voice your shortcomings and our local misdeeds. We now find another meeting where I'm standing in front of you. I could be naming names again, giving time frames again, pointing out activities again. That should never have happened, according to the codes, all three of you swore to uphold. 
We witnessed in many of these meetings uh, some talk of offenses and lawsuits. No one questions me. Yet you people sue each other for pointing out claims against each other. Departments point out alleged crimes. All I get are blank stares. When I point out the alleged paperwork in the emails that are given that have been given to me, maybe some sound bites are given now and again. Nothing on today's agenda is bringing up uh, bringing us up to speed on what is happening on the MS4 review, the investigation. Nothing about the lies. Nothing about the deceit that was present on the application. It has all been pointed out and never denied. No investigation on the signs being ordered down. No looking into the sheriff's department pulling over one truck the business owner was driving that day. Yeah, I'm sure he drives every day. As, it turn, as I turn in all the paperwork backing up these words, I get more stares. You, uh, you have been lied to about me. I have been lied to by elected and appointed officials. I have witnessed elected and appointed stand in front of you and misspeak. In other words, more lies. As you know, I have gotten the state involved on the most big, as you, you're all the way I got the state involved in this again. You were copied in the emails. On the most basic of things, the county cannot even take care of. Debris. My household and the landowners that are greatly affected by the operations are tired of the smell of the diesel fuels. We are tired of hearing the equipment. We are tired of tracking through the sand. We are tired of hearing the tailgates. Worse yet, we're tired of traveling through all the debris left on the roadways, tired of cleaning the sand out of our homes and our cars. So the sand is real. The health problems it causes are real. Now a little salt in the wound. Today, you're going to talk, uh, during old business, a second and final reading of a rezoning permit uh, to permit residential living in an agricultural area. We never had a first reading on allowing an industrialized business into our neighborhood. Why not just give the decision-making process to this, the same people that decided that the bulldozer was acceptable in my neighborhood? Just turn your backs on the decision they make, but you have on our neighborhood. Six years and nine months is a very long time. Instead, you're going to vote on what? If a cow makes too much noise for their new possible neighborhood? If a farm noise is too loud? If a tractor makes a noise? If now, a homeowner may react to seasonal, or how a homeowner may react to fertilizing, uh, using fertilizer for animal or from animal waste. These people would be choosing to move into that area. We did not get a choice. We did not get a vote. When will we get the truth? When will we get our property rights back? When that, our property rights that we pay for every year? Six years and nine months. Six years and nine months. Six years and nine months. When's it going to be done? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, may I uh, present uh, Mr. Beach with a copy of the uh, stop work order that you signed? Yeah, yes, I was going to talk about that under the department heads as the MS4 uh, permit holder. Thank you. But we will be, uh, shortly I'll be um, addressing some of your concerns. Um, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anyone else for public comment? Is there anyone on Zoom who would like to make any public comment? Uh, you can raise your hand or turn on your camera. Anyone else for public comment? Sir, I am on Oh, that's you. Okay. Stop that. <laughs> Darlene, you want to make some public comment? <laughs> All right. Anyone else in the room that wishes to make public comment on anything other than MetaView, which we'll be uh, listening to shortly? All right, let's move on then. Um, next, we have department head uh, reports. Any department head who wishes to report at this time? Good morning, Commissioners. Larry Lewandowski, Facilities Director. Um, as we, you all know, you've filed in some emails about uh, some counter issues in the surveyor's office about putting some glass in the door. I just wanted, uh, we got some prices back and I want to get permission to approach the council to get this moving uh, with your approval to move forward with it. Um, one of the prices we got back was from Larson Dan Danielson for $18,985. We feel that's, they covered everything that needed to be done in the project and that would be the price that we would submit. Do you need permission to go to the council? 
Motion to approve that. Second. We have a, um, a motion to approve going to the council for um, security measures to be taken in the surveyor's office. Uh, we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. So you are approved to go to the council. Thank you. Requesting funds. Thank you. Are there any other department heads who wish to speak at this time? Anyone on Zoom, uh, department heads who wish to speak? Good morning, Barb Mossman, Good morning. Human Resources Director. Um, as you all are aware, I have tendered my resignation with the county several weeks ago, and Friday will be my last day. Um, in my absence, Monique Thomas.
Okay, it's very clear when this can be an emergency order with uh, tons of things that you know that it's a liability and it's a health and safety issue. So for me, that's, that's uh, we, we don't need any, any accidents to happen. Having seen the accident that happened um, in the last few years, some years ago, where lives were hurt in the United States, we need to get through to that point. That's not the right deal. So it's, it's, it's happened before, and we certainly need not to take every precaution. So I appreciate your work on that. I have any other questions for both of you. Thanks for doing the right thing. Thank you. I just hope to say, I don't debate the fact that the work needed to be done, but under no circumstances did we not know that that was happening. And for council members to receive the packet, we have to vote on it. It's wrong. We can't, we're not given that information prior, and yet for months, this was already in strict stage. I got the least the obvious, our attorneys, and not all the council members were aware of it. We are elected just for a few hours. We have a, we have a responsibility to let the community, when they're asking us questions, to know about these things. And for us to vote on a contract, it's over a half a million dollars minutes before we're receiving the, the but we receive this packet and within minutes we have to vote on this. I think it's wrong. Thank you for your time. Construction. 
encoded against the track of building parts of any zoning variances. Detective Mark 15 although he's given me a form to prosecute with the major days under pains of perjury, that all our MS4 permits comply with federal and state law, and that these two permits, as currently written, do not describe with any specificity what construction is planned and how strong water runoff from that construction site or building project is being prevented from affecting nearby streams and waterways. I'm not going to allow open having five year permits for land capturing or tree clearing without knowing what construction project is planned for a given site. And this is in my role as um, Commission President and MS Board Permit. Any other department heads before we move on? Yes, sir. So, um, for this, you will go to the council for your request of permission? Yes, we have a motion to negotiate with the council. We have a motion and a second to uh, consider the acquisition and um, permission to approach the council for this, uh, this software upgrade. I'll just in favor of something by saying hi, but I'll just carry thank you. Thank you. Next, we join the consent commission for annual training uh, to New Orleans by um, John Lake Prosecutor. Good morning, I'm Sarah Kinesh. I'm just like John Lake. 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 I'm speaking to send four of our staff members to this training. And uh, just to be everyone's aware, we're actually this, this conference is so popular that there's already a wait list. So we may not end up actually going, but we want to be proactive so that we can at least keep that approval now that if we do get the chance to be a group of members of conference, that we have everything taken care of. Yes, we do. 
sometimes I The second to consider permission to sell the cars that are used to transport vehicles and to keep these in the car for placing vehicles. All those in favor to the public say aye. All right, aye. Motion is carried. Thank you, Chief. Next item of business consider the second and final reading for rezoning to permit Sloan Avenue land opportunities for residential development on State Road 2 East, just off by the city of the port. We have two attorneys on the shop right here today. Mr. Yeah, good morning. My name is John Lee. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the petitioner uh, in this matter. Uh, Ms. Potts uh, is a colleague of mine and was here at your last meeting on the 16th of March. Uh, at that time, there was a public hearing conducted. There were several neighbors who were concerned, uh, and we were given some uh, direction on uh, what it wish was to prepare. Uh, if you will, the concept plan um, to somewhat visualize how a residential subdivision may affect uh, our 166 acres. And we've done that, and I believe you've seen a copy. Um, one of the other things that we were asked to do was to uh, meet with the neighbors, and we did that. Uh, on the 29th of uh, March, we met with uh, approximately a half dozen uh, of, of the neighbors that uh, were on our notice list, and some of which uh, stood here. Uh, on the 16th. Um, I think that was a, a really a good meeting. Um, we shared with them a, a concept plan, uh, not the one that you have. Following that meeting, we heard a couple of their, their concerns and we changed the concept plan slightly. Um, it's not a significant change, but I think we addressed some of the concerns. The changes in the concept plan, the one that you've seen, uh, the earlier plan, um, did not have as much uh, buffer yard on the southern end of that, so we increased that. We showed some dimensions there, so you can see it's 100 feet uh, along the south, 180 at one point along the east. So we've got significant green space separation from the backyards uh, to the property lines. Um, the other thing uh, that we had, you'll see somewhere in the uh, northeast part, there's some uh, walking trails. We had a walking trail along that southern part. Uh, between the back lot line and the southern property line, we had a trail in there. Uh, as you know, I think some of the concerns of the farmers uh, have to do with uh, overspray uh, during um, the treatment of their fields. So they didn't like that walking trail, so we removed that. So we've made some changes to address the concerns. I can tell you that we didn't get that blessing. Um, I don't think that um, we went into that meeting thinking that we would, but we recognize that they have concerns and we tried to address those concerns. Uh, we think that the, the petition is well stated. Uh, this really is residential property. It's not agricultural property. It's definitely wooded. It has a significant amount of fire on the property. And really isn't good farming. Hasn't been farmed. Yes, trees, uh, forests are uh, a renewable crop, but this crop hasn't been harvested in many, many years. And this is not, in my opinion, I believe, not agricultural land. Part of the land, of course, is exactly what we want it to be our land be throughout the whole area. Uh, is it a majority of the 166 acres? No, it's not. It's the front of the land I went to. But your own um, ordinances and comprehensive plan suggest that if we have public utilities available, agricultural, I'm sorry, residential development is the best for that use. It states that right in your, your comprehensive plan, and we have that available now. The city of the port has the uh, utilities available. That's the, the signatures who are not, uh, which we bring in. 
the sellers not sure to the party. We may need to make sure that it's appropriate and that we have expectations and those expectations are met by the Catholic community. So the Lord Calvary is in the party party has expectations and the developers can make sure that they meet those expectations. So from my perspective, um, without more information, I would come with very little comments. So what can you give one of the more drastic or at least what you know, which is really a different sort of division? Thank you. 
that we've heard. You've got to convince them. And, and what you can do is propose uh, that conditions and uh, propose contract. It's uh, like the starting would be conditional on that, but uh, I certainly am willing to entertain anything to pass it on to the front. And I think, and Mr. Christian, I would ask you to get permission I told you before about the multiple square trips, airplane spraying, onion top removal with the uh, eyes burning, but that means cow manure, hog manure, cover crops, and dust. All contributing to a PGD, 
population number in Korea is around 562, according to the other map. And you know, obviously, the village, whatever it's called. Um, maybe, and so maybe this department's really dumb at throwing Korea's population. The population of the class where I was raised is around 555, maybe double, you know, yeah, is, is the, the density of people. The population of Kingsbury, 250, maybe four times of the population. So in my view, this is no subdivision, it's a city. That's how I view it. Okay, and this is personal. Um, the class is a week, the class at least has its own water and sewer plants, library, volunteer fire department, post office, and for the past 1,000 years of school, which I think is probably going to be a big time, but it's going to be a lot of time. So the whole process of rezoning is not in my life, right? I just don't know about how I don't understand it. I didn't realize the planning commission would vote to recommend a zoning change without knowing what the plan would be or any ideas, and knowing, but knowing what the opposition is. Um, I thought maybe it was thrown out there this time to just look out into the first city, see this or not. I'm not so sure that the first city mayor would be on board with that. That's what anyone asked him. It's just a question. Now, how about the volunteer fire department in Raleigh County, which I already in response to several townships who operate with 24 volunteers and are at 17 with no one stepping up to fill those positions? I know there will be an ambulance station in the early day, great, but it doesn't help with the fact that the fire is burning and you need to draw the blood. It costs 45 on the permanent mission. 1993, our family, our family, um, brought the property and joined the persons in question. We invested a lot to the property and the equipment, knowing its potential. Major companies have faith in us, the architectures and boxes to contract with us, and those companies have a stake in what we do. I can only guess the dollars generated from any products that they sell. You know, like seed corn, tomatoes, uh, garlic, honey sets, garlic, um, uh, popcorn, uh, milk. I can only imagine what you know, that land generates. We have built a highly intensified, heavily industrialized farm. It just so happens to be designed exactly how we buy agriculture. So let's imagine if 308 homes existed today, and we did not, and we came to get the zoning change from residential on our land to agriculture, right next to that. Not knowing our intentions, not knowing how many animals we may have to buy, not knowing what we would do day or night, not knowing the noise, not knowing the future of the drink, the future of the past, not knowing curious children to step foot. And I feel it's impossible to get hurt. So, just to explain the design first, details of it. You might not change it for one, you might not change it for me without details. Do our opposition details from these last few years. I believe you would not resign your industrial approach to residential. We are not your typical agricultural land use in that area. Let's be clear, I am not opposed to housing. I have relatives in, in whom I love dearly who make their living building homes, investing and developing land. He is a believer. When there is opposition, it should be ruled who was there first, what was it served as. I'm asking you to vote now. Can you, my book, it, it's a problem, not. Uh, he still had those kinds of things. You know, it's not always going his way. He develops uh, not always going his way. And, and that's, that's how he, he would view life. Um, and I mean, you alluded to Gordon County, and uh, they do have an idea. They do have a plan of going forward. Some things just need to make more sense to me. Uh, I, believe there, I believe there is and will be larger options. Just not this one. Please take what I have said in its entirety and not out of context, but please understand we haven't had any trespassers injured on our farm or close calls that I can remember to be alive. And, and so, it starts to get emotional. Yeah, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a wife, 
So I'm going to review the history real quickly. Um, Christopher Burke was engaged to begin looking at the legal fees based uh, options for improvements back in September 2019. Uh, that started with uh, the uh, proposal through our commissioners to look at five items, uh, meeting with Congress Staff and every representatives, uh, evaluating technical data for five options as proposed by the committee, and then eventually I think I'm recommending the steps. So when we began the process, we looked at the five options uh, identified by the Fort County staff. Option one was a gravity undertaking with a broken outlet, uh, downtown of Route 75 West at Queensbury Creek. Option two, and five, multiple pipe well points to Richie's farm water, and then eventually discharge that and down come with the South West of Queensbury Creek again. Uh, the other options we found gravity undertakings in different parts of the subdivision with uh, unfaithful to uh, some protective farm water and have 75 plus to down to uh, Kingsbury Creek. And then uh, option three, I think the section three of the written report uh, for today, we can review quickly the options methodology. In a review, the five options provided by the county, the options between the five and two design criteria that are generally accepted in general practice for design projects. One, we try to locate infrastructure within existing public right of way as much as possible. The fact that the chief cost to minimum, if we say the right of way out of deal with easements and such. Our five options they proposed uh, to work uh, on September 2019 were contained within the existing public right of way. And then also the evaluation of new outbound locations. Uh, we consider existing way historical finished items. Uh, Attach exhibit one uh, to the report is a uh, screenshot of what uh, some of designers frequently use uh, from the U.S. Geological Society, the Screenshot Program. Uh, the kind of dark background, you can see the blue shaded lines, those are the uh, historical drainage patterns, uh, overlying surface drainage uh, from north of the project area. Uh, the upper and south direction in Kingsbury Creek. Uh, Gray is following from uh, where Interviews Middle East States is located uh, down kind of where it's like West to Kingsbury Creek. So, uh, looking at existing gray, existing drainage patterns, uh, the options provided by the county uh, were consistent with our uh, internet practice. In item four, we talked about uh, our assessment of five range alternatives. We concluded that uh, five conceptual alternatives are under the county that appear to be reasonable solutions in reducing groundwater levels throughout the subdivision to come to gravity drinking periods that lowers the water table. The low basin elevations would be the most effective long term solution. In doing that assessment, uh, we also came up with three recommendations. In section five, we identified those. Uh, five point one, we recommended the county engage a geotechnical consultant. We start groundwater mountain wells at strategic locations throughout the subdivision. Uh, we were able to help with this task by identifying locations for the mountain wells and 
I'm very sorry to show up and we are we are a little bit worse. The other thing was people are sharing things very free this as a gift. Things very free this not a gift. I think it should ever be a gift. This is just something we work on our level that we take and get you can return them back to nice man and street. That's what the environment loves, that's what it works best. So but it is a mutual dream. So everyone brings in the history of the saw the things from the things we see and see the arms and the trim fish, like, oh, how many things go free? Things go free, brings everything from the box on the 18th street and stay with her. It's a huge mutual dream. And most people live next door, but you know, they don't see that that way because they live next door. But there is so much love coming through that trim fish. And every trim fish, things go free, it's also a mutual dream. The subsurface water is the only thing we're putting in space. And there were concerns about the laterals we put that could potentially be hooked up to the perimeter drains on people's houses, which they are pumping, and some of these people are pumping a lot. And they are just taking some surface water into their perimeter drains around their foundation and putting it back on the street and making it surface. We have some laterals that could potentially do that. We don't think you should, we, we think you should not do the laterals, but we think you should put the keys in while we're in here. And let it stop that big hurt because we don't want to cut this road up again. So, if you look at our last report, the number at one point said there was $3 million discussion about the system of cuts. We're not putting that system in. I was saying this before, this system is just subsurface water. So, about seven feet deep for the water in the ground only. And that brings us down to about the million dollar price tag. You can't spend $3 million. But in that vein, we're not spending $3 million. So this isn't 100% of the cure. We're not taking all the water from the Glendale Meadow on the front and putting this back. This is the least amount of cost, the value we can get to get the most water in, away from the sewer. Not for sure, but we have a cure nearly everything we need to do. But the permits, Jay is taking all the care of those permits. We have our land in the area for environmental management. Uh, Department of Natural Resources, Indiana, Army Corps, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and there are others here to work with. And some concerns were left were that the permits that have been started do not say, do not, in their mind, do not say that it's true. There are different kinds of permits. This permit, which we typically work with, is stormwater, and this is a surface permit, or a subsurface permit. There are things we can do with a nation we don't impact. The permitting process, which is set up to not impact wetlands, and streams, and creeks, and ditches, and lakes, and ponds. So we make sure that we protect the water before, at the outlet, before it goes into the creek. And the jurisdiction authorities, the West Fish and Wildlife, the DMR, I then like that on the court to make sure we're not just putting a pipe right into a creek. And if anyone's driving on the highways back in nowadays, it's very rare. You drive on your bridge, you see storm waters coming right off the bridge, right, right down to the next level of India. We don't do that anymore. So these permits have to make sure we don't do that, and that allays a lot of things that the permitting authorities are working to. They don't want the water going directly into a creek. They want somehow clean they throw it in there. They want to make sure that if there is some contaminants in it, it gets stopped on the way down. So different permits. I believe one person had to build land to build a pond or a lake in the floodplain down the street. That permit is very tough. That permit is a very strict law, arduous permit to do. When you want to build a lake or a pond or a spring in upstream, there are standards about the upstream capacity and the lake and how much you're going to hold and those dumbest permits are not tough. This is not that permit. This permit is just a highway to the structure. Before it gets to the wetland, before it gets to the creek, so we're not contaminated to make sure that we're safe and not contaminated. So, those are the concerns we heard. And we always welcome any concerns you can have. Email us or email you or email you or email, email, email anyone. We will look at how we can start. We've been working on this for over a decade. The last one I believe I think was asked was can you go a different direction? Now, that is a tough one because the other direction is the track stick, which is the outflow and stable flow. Now, from a drainage board perspective, the trap stitch is a regulated drain. It is a regulated drain, but it does not have an assessment, so there's no money. The trap stitch people want some money to clean the ditch to make it flow better. But they have come to the 
Stairs my example. I tell you to use the tablets and some information. Thank you. some of us that are concerned about what's going to happen down the stream. So I'm going to start out with the, uh, the first page that you got on the application and some problems that we had with that and kind of some of the problems that on the application have since they changed. If you look at the project name, it says bridge number 77, bridge repair. Now, we know that that's not what the project is. If you go down to number two on your list, on that same page one, it gives the address and driving instructions. Take 800 south out of Union Mills to 400 west and then turn south on 400 west. That's where you're supposed to where this project is. If you look at number three on your list, it says, is it a lake? And it says, no. No. Is it a stream? Yes. Is it wetlands? No. So now we need to go over to uh, Page two, and it's not the second page, the second page is one page, but on page two, and this is the correspondence that uh, Jerry had with Martin, I believe his last name is Martin, who is the Wetlands Director of Quality, or Wetland Program Specialist, Office of Water Quality. And if you look down there, we go to number four, and it says, and, 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 and this is Martin's question back. To Mr. Sullivan said, in summary, the county is installing a plastic pipe on the left side of 75 from the left subdivision to Kingsbury Creek. The pipe will convey sub subsurface water to the Meadow View subdivision to the creek. The purpose of this project is, is to lower water table, and this is the one that really is interesting, and hopefully relieve some additional flooding problems. So now if you go down to number five on this, you'll see where Jerry responds back. The very first thing he says, I don't understand this project. Could you please highlight on the map where the actual stream impact will occur and provide a little more information about the type of impact? Digging out of the stream, placing of the pipe, place of the riprap. Also, can you send photos of the impacted area? And that was on the 14th. Okay. That, that letter was set up. So now let's go to the 15th, and that will be page 3. Now let's go to number 6, and it states that there will be an 80 feet by 10 foot temporary dis uh, distribution for the pipe in this decree. The structure will take place in a wetland. In a wetland area. It's been what he's got in there. But if we go back and we look at page, the first page, it says, no, not in the way now. So let's go on to back to what would be page uh, 1A, and we look at that. And we go halfway down the page, 
and you'll see that there's a, a question one through five are uh, checked. But question six, seven, and eight are not. And so there's a copy of the wetlands and land use report. The projects were wetland, with wetland impacts that was not checked. Copy of correspondence of usage with the project with, with from the USACD projects with wetland impacts. Copies of correspondence with the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Division of Natural Resources, Preserve, uh, Division of Natural Preserve required. So none of that was put on there. So now I want you to go to the yellow that is the with yellow line on it. I had a conversation with uh, Caitlin Salzer, and she is with uh, the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. But she responded back to me, uh, I'm not going to read that, but because it is less than one square mile of surface area, that the DNR is not responsible for helping us on this project. The reason that I know about the DNR is when Mr. Mayor was saying that somebody down the street had a very lengthy report that somebody was meeting. It took a long time, a lot of people were very, very high on my property and didn't flip them. So I am familiar with my report. It was prepared by a wetlands biologist who worked for the state of Indiana, and he actually sent my report, the first one, to the Army Corps of Engineers, and they sent it back. And, and, and Jim Newell was the person, and he said, I realized that there were three springs in the state of Indiana that were controlled by the DNR, and it was one of those three. So anyway, and it also in there, it, I don't know if I highlighted it on here, is after it talks about the one square mile, she states in there, there was not enough details in the plans on the report website to determine if it meets our requirements or not. So, if you go to the, to the next page, then, this was uh, spring gauging stations, and this was done through the KTT River uh, studies that they've got on it. If you go to line number two, when it's got Kingsbury Creek near the port, you'll see that it's three miles long, but it has 7.1 square miles of surface area, so it does, it does meet the requirements for the DNR to have to have a permit. So I'm doing that. I sent back a letter to Caitlin um, um, yesterday. I hadn't heard it. I just checked and I got her response back. And I said, as I wrote back to her in, some, in doing some research to know on subdivision during this project, I discovered the attached attach regarding the Kingsbury Creek drainage area. Please review the chart um, um, regarding the 7.1 square miles on line two of the attached table. I'm curious if this relates to the concerns referred in the one mile square, one square mile you mentioned uh, in your email to me. I also have the same party on top of the money marking from Ida. Now if you go to your green packet, and this is one of those that was taken off of uh, the, the county's website. This is where it really sucks to be a county commissioner. Because you guys got caught on something that you had nothing to do with. But I need to read the first line on this. On December 18, 1995, the Burke County Commissioners approved and signed a plan for the fifth edition of the Neverview Subdivision to be Neverview Estates to be, to be developed. The fifth edition includes 45 lots. All of these lots were approved with basements, wells, and septics. Prior to the purchase of the lot, the ground level indicator informed the ground level indicator information that the county had was not shared with those who bought the lots. It was discovered that after the it, it was discovered after the building commissioners the building commissioner's office had paperwork on file and it was from the soil survey profile description indicating that the ship would be but the boring shows that the level indicates from 30 to 54 inches of surface water than 16 of the 45 lots. So, you, you guys have the burden of dealing with something that this subdivision, the last part of it, or at least several of those times, should have never ever been put in. So, now if you go in the next page down there, and it talks about the rain level uh, that has taken place 
over the years. And we had several years where it was dry and there wasn't a problem. But I, I'm more interested, it's hard to see. If you go to number seven, uh, on the top of the page, you have seven things that are listed there. As a result of the groundwater flooding issue, the Clark County Commission has accepted a resolution on 2010-3, committing $3,300,000, uh, which was then mail for an in-kind contribution to the county as a 25% match towards the $1,200,000 FEMA grant uh, to engineer and install a drainage solution for the subdivision. The FEMA grant was awarded to the county. However, the grant was never implicated due to concerns regarding possible groundwater table impacts on adjacent, on adjacent properties. I don't know that any of that study has been done in. There you go, the next page on there, it lists some, um, it, it talks about items that are unique to the Navy subdivision. It lists the 40 lots that have trouble with the groundwater situation right now. I have to tell you that our group is not at all opposed to any of these people from that subdivision. We have compassion for them. We just uh, we have concerns downstream a little bit. But I want to look at and on um, where it says uh, large, this is a large scale issue and it goes through the lots on there. But the next one underneath it says at least four times in the past year of last year's septic systems. Lot number 40, 35, 45, 67, and 106. Well, if you lived in Raleigh Prairie and you had septic problems that were out there, there was a new septic system line that was run out there that you had found to. If you lived in Springville Township and you had septic problems, there was a line that was running to those people to take care of their septic problems. If you lived in the subdivision, the, the golf course, the big back of, off of Johnson Road, those people have city sewer and city water in there, even though they live in the county. Now, if you go to the next page, you start recommendations. I'm looking at number five on the recommendations. By lowering the groundwater table, are there any risks related to the first impacts on the adjacent property owners beyond the Metal View subdivision? And we believe that there is problems with it. If you go to the next page, then, the thing that we're really interested in, it shows the houses on here and what the groundwater tables are that are highlighted in the blue on it. But what I'm really in the winter about, if you look at this, there are three lots on here that have not been developed yet. So my question is, after, if there is a resolve, resolution to this somehow, um, what happens with the water? Does the guy who built the subdivision now, without having any skin above him, get to sell three more lots that have been doing that could be possible to do with it? The next one that we've got on there is um, some pictures that, that I had. And I know that Mr. Hendricks said that he looked at the pictures on there and he had a lot of different pictures on there. So I tried to turn these around. I have to back up. My neighbor is also here right now, Mr. Harmon. Mr. Harmon lives at, I live at 6,500 South in West 35. And Mr. Harmon, where do you live? Well, he's got some pictures of that still in there. Anyway, when he built his house, he had to get a uh, flood insurance in order to get a bank loan where his house is. This is a picture of my wife and kids, my wife, my daughter, and my two grandkids sitting on the pier, the bridge that we built that goes across the stream. This is the picture of that same bridge with the water flowing underneath it when it floods. The next one is the flood zone here is where it's flooded, and it's not across towards Highway 6 where it crosses the bridge there. There's only the bridge. The next one is showing my shed that's on the other right side of the stream, and I didn't, I didn't get the ones that showed it the worst. But the one that shows it the worst, the uh, wooden bridge at that time that was that wood structure on the top of it and flooded the filled with those wooden boards clear within five foot of that shirt. So. I know there's some other people that are going to kind of uh, debate whether or not I should say this or not. I feel like it's a Ronald Reagan moment for me about Mr. Gorbachev. So, 
this project is in its own way. And it is a wetlands, so let's not make it a flood more way, and let's not make it a real, real, real wetlands. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just to be clear, some of the issues are yeah, you're, you're welcome to come up next. The commission still is to solve the problem, not the problem from one generator to, to the next. And that just is why, and that's why we have to um, go up on this very good show that we're answering the question and we're taking this to a week and we're making this safe like was made as he referenced about um, 40 years ago. Does that go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us your thoughts? I don't think I'm going to I just brought some pictures. How many of you guys are seeing the things that are like? The next one is a beautiful place. Sir, so could you give your name and your address for the record, please? Um, I'm 600 in the US, 35 stars. It's like when you cross this ship. If you look at the bridge there, I don't know if I have a little bit of 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 a there's the power of sales and the thing that we're These people are the problem and they need to have a crack. It's like, I don't know the best thing to do, but I can't put it down and have a crack. It's not that we sell this stuff and just get the things out of it. It needs money. It's got trees. Every time the trees are, it's not getting too hard of it. I thought it was a DNR, not the DNR, the Army Corps has to take care of it. But they don't get a DNR because they just fly over the road with great people who don't see nothing. But the water won't stop, they don't do anything. So, we've got all the experience when the police fly over it. They don't get any of it. They don't have to get it every day. They don't have to get it every day. They don't have to get it every day. They don't have to get it every day.
So I must run to stop them to be able to punish because of this. And when we are pumping, like I said, we pump it out onto our yard as far as we can. And like I said, it just recycles and recycles and recycles. And it's just very frustrating. We are one of the last ones to get hit with it. I feel so bad for our neighbors in the back. You know, it's just awful. I mean, it's, some of them, they be around. It's just terrible. You go back there and just pump it because everybody throws their pipes, you know, because you try to get it out of there and it's a mess. And I just we hope you would consider, you know, doing our project because, like I said, we've been doing that for 30 years before they had most of the self division of pipes. And like I said, I feel so glad to bring people in. Uh, the gentleman by, uh, right behind us, they're a uh, uh, pump that blew completely out of the stuff from the, the pipe. You know, just blew it completely out. That's how much pressure there that was. And the expense these people have had to go through. I mean, you look up in the bathroom, people's furniture sitting outside because they've lost everything. And, you know, and I understand the problem with the people, you know, with everything going south to our Kingsbury. Uh, and hopefully they won't cause a problem, but you know, we're talking about trains and bridges and that getting flooded, but we're talking about roads and people spent thousands and thousands of insurance being covered. So I just remember it. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Hello, my name is Gina Gaines, I live at 0632 West Nomad Drive in the park, and thank you for letting me speak. Very briefly, I know you've heard many, many, many times over the last almost 14 years, um, so I don't have to reiterate, um, you already know our story. I do want to say to um, the residents down south that we, none of us want anything to happen to any of your properties. We wish that there was a solution for everybody that could help us out. Um, um, I think that this solution might be Agent for itself. Um, but I did want to say that we, along with you, had the question about these last three properties. And we, a couple of summers ago, did send an email to the council, the commission, all of the departments, the health department, pretty much everybody in the county, to please not ever let those three lots be sold and developed. Because those lots actually have water level indicators of 30 inches below the surface. And we know that even though know, the system goes through and once it starts helping us, that's still going to add more by allowing people to put three more basements, three more subject systems. So we are in agreement with you that those properties should never be sold and developed. You know, and um, we wish thank you very much and we hope that everybody comes out ahead when the solution is taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Any other Hello, I'm Sherry Bannock. My husband is stuck in the green, Aaron Bannock. We are the first property owners, uh, home site owners, south of the creek. We want to know, we want you guys to know that we have been trashed. You know, it's been looking for everyone in the middle of subdivision. I've been dealing with this for years. And I feel terrible for them. I, I hope that we can come to a resolution um, because I can't imagine the life that they've lived since. You know, this flooding has started. Um, there are farms and past and grocery stores. So we, we understand, you know, what they're dealing with. My main concern, uh, obviously, is the plans that um, we have seen with us are dropping in the water is dropping into a, a wetland and there has not been like that. I don't understand how that can even be. That's the question that the person has got. How can I know how can you run up through more water and flooding into the And I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Mr. Hendricks, do you want to address that? Floor plans and floor plans are designated by any economic farm or resource and then sent on to FEMA or the National National Association for Flood Insurance Purposes. Yes, they do document flood plans and flood ways, and those are a calculation of a hundred year event, a five hundred year event, a thousand year event. So there are many flood plans and flood ways. 
it is my recommendation that you, that you proceed subject to having the workshops, information workshops as the project proceeds. Thank you. Do you want to find out the comment? Yes, uh, this is what we have now been about in the permitting for the project. Uh, which is been having a uh, be concerned about additional water to a water rate for many of us about enough, but this permitting by the DNR. If you said you received the permit application for that with the conditions that uh, the threshold is required, uh, there's what's called a uh, transfer of liquid, so if you put in a new alpha discharge into a water rate, if you discharge alpha is greater than transfer of feet, then you require a detailed computer model that identifies the potential impacts of the dark screen area. Transfer of feet if it's about 40 kilos per
the mention about this free lot stuff for sale, that would be really, really uh, irres- irresponsible on the part of the, the people that are to sell the, it's an expected for the basement and the uh, septic. They just can't. They just should have been stopped a few classes ago. So, uh, maybe it would be, uh, I, I when I'm looking at the, the people that we have in Europe, they are professionals, as Mr. Winter stated, they're professionals for what they do. Um, do we all feel comfortable trusting them as being professionals that this is going to work? I think that the, we do need to leave our second half just in case, and we can shut that up. That's not so good now. So this contract, which I understand is signed, ready to go, and yeah. they're probably buying a pipe at the price today, not the price it's not. Potentially, and Jay Hammond talked about this, but potentially you could put the French brand subsurface in NOAA 275. And if they're at that point, and while you're having the information, in, we might be able to see what's coming into that system at that minimum of 75 in NOAA to understand if all uh, these flows are correct. And you could physically see, because that's where Burke left off, can we physically see how much underground flow is coming inside? So if they built that, we're buying you enough time. It's going to take them a while to build the deep to the low rock to build the, the part of this structure. And that manual, well, we can see what's sitting in the water and how much is going down potentially to these very feet. So if it's an enormous amount, we stop. We don't put the pipe in. If it's not, we continue down 75, let the waters to keep flowing and keep very feet like right? we think the minimum flow is. And that would buy you enough time for the electric contract move forward. Have an informational session, and we will all see the professionals and unprofessionals what's actually coming out of the ground. Stick your head, yes or no, Mr. Dennis, that's not like a good idea. Well, I think Question when I raised this with Patty Duncan with the, with the state, said if you've got an engineering firm and they're really good engineers, they will be able to tell you mathematically if that's going to flood our property or not. And he said, so ask them mathematically, can you prove that it will or will not flood our property? Good it, question. Keep, keep in mind, too, and the commission needs to know this, even if you proceed forward and allow the contract to go forward, have your informational workshop, any of the remonstrators downstream still have the ability to file an intervention with the permitting authorities. So this is just the first step. I mean, you yeah. authorize the contract to move forward. Anybody who's got concerns about potential flooding can intervene with any of those permitting agencies, I, uh, IDNR, Army Corps. So there, this isn't the last opportunity for them to have their say. But we're, I'm, we're, I'm simply concerned from a contract standpoint that we preserve the pricing that's there with what, it, what the council's already authorized. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dawn Melna. Um, there are other engineers. There are other engineers who will do what's being said here. Uh, and if the permit is changed, there needs to be public comments to that. Mr. Moffin, you know, I only have that permit application for two weeks. I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, and I hear Mr. Hendrick say that this has been going on since over a decade, as he said, and that they talked with the subdivision residents in 2019 and 20. Well, there is a huge lack of public notice here. It's a huge component of this. You're trying to undo a wrong that was done many years ago. Well, don't make a bad decision again and not allow public comment. Table or stop this project. Let people discuss it, know what's going on. Just don't make another bad decision. And I think that's what you're about to do. Don't let that happen. Mr. Hendricks. So typically when they do this construction, they would start at the low end and work their way up. But we have no walk, which is a whole different feature of French drain pipe, which needs to cut the road and put this under the road. So you could, they could change kind of the construction schedule, which shouldn't change the price, Jay would have to ask them, and put the French drain pipe in at no walk and dead end it at 75 
and see what's coming out of there before they move south to Kingsbury Creek. And if all our engineering professional calculations are correct, we think we know how much is going to come out of there and how long it's going to come out of there, we will actually get to physically see what's coming into that structure. And then we can decide how far we need to go because the permits are not for no Walk Drive, they're not for 75 West. The permits are only for Kingsbury Creek, wetlands, floodplains, floodways. So we could stop short, JSA would stop short if we had to and not impact those, but those permits are separate. But now you do have to have those permits if you're going to have outflow. So if it all went bad again and we put the structure under no Walk and it filled up with water and it was a horrible amount of water, potentially you could start pumping out of that manhole instead of people pumping out of their basements. It gives you another opportunity. It's not wasted money. So if we find out when they construct it, we can all go out and look at it. Everyone can look at it. We'll have to be safe. We have to make sure there's OSHA requirements. You don't want to fall in the manhole. We can see what's coming out of this waterway before we even get to Kingsbury Creek, if you move forward. And while you're doing that, you can still hold an information session to actually get more concerns. We all, we're fine with concerns. Bring us your concerns. We will show you our data. It, it's not an exact date. It's not like we're building a tool here. We're asking about water flowing through soil for 700 feet. There are a parameter of different data. So every engineering firm will have a range of data, just like stormwater and rain events. There's, there's not a number that says this many inches are going to fall on this spot. There's a range. And so that range is what we look at on what the impact at Kingsbury Creek is. And we don't think there's going to be a demonstrable impact in any event, let alone in a high water event. So you can move forward and do that piece. And if it all goes bad, uh, Woodruff would not want to put the 75 in anyways, and we wouldn't pay for it, and we wouldn't be on the hook for it. Based on what you said, then I would make a motion that we move ahead. Uh, hold you and Jay personally, and uh, Mr. Wallace personally responsible to keep an eye on this. And the biggest complaint I get, no matter what we're talking about, is when people come to me and say, We'd like to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. We need some communication. Communication is key, and I, no matter what we're talking about. And these folks, they want to know what's going on. So if you start that and you're looking at what's going on and everything's going smooth, okay, good. But if, if we find out that dumping all that water into Kingsbury Creek is a bad idea, then we're going to stop. We're not going to flood those poor people out. That's agreeable. Madam President, can I also propose, Mr. Uh, Anders did an outstanding narrative for the commission and for the council president. I suggest that that be posted on the county's website. It's a two-page narrative. Uh, he worked hard at that. There's some good visuals with it. I think it may be helpful for the public to see what he's done on that. That's what I was giving uh, Darlene there because she could I just the website. So, so Darlene or Diane can make sure that that gets posted uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor to approve the project and with the stopgap measures that we have discussed. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Uh, before I do that, Madam President, I, I, I know this has been a really long meeting. Um, I know there was one or two people who haven't commented that wanted to come up that got cut off once or twice by folks coming back up to the podium. Would it be all right to allow just a minute or two of comment for someone who hasn't spoken yet who's sat here for the past three hours just to have one or two minutes if they still wanted to say something? Okay. I'll make this quick because I think it's moving in the direction that I was going to suggest is as a resident of um, Noak subdivision, I'm Rose Hyatt, 678 West Noak Drive. I just wanted to say we have come before you multiple times for a lot of years. We finally got this project through the commission, through the county council. The contracts are signed and, you know, I just wanted to encourage you as well to move forward this, with this project. And there's definitely permit processes and, and opportunities, as Sean Freeman indicated. But just to stop it, based on concerns of the public, which, which we hear your concerns and feel for you as well, well, but we have professionals, and we have professionals that issue the permit. So that was my comment, is just to encourage you to please move forward with the project. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, we're done. <laughs> John Smith, uh, 0566 West Nowak Drive. Uh, appreciate everybody taking the time today. We built the house in 2006. Builder filed a, a permit from the county. They dug the foundation and no water. 2009, we put an in-ground swimming pool in August. No water. Then it was the aftermath of the hurricane that came through, and they dumped eight, they dumped eight to ten inches of water. And that's when all the issues started. So this past year, our sump pumps have not run. So to me, 
majority of this pipe is either going to flow very minimal or not at all. So, so I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sure. I would like to suggest that the commission form a steering committee for this project. All residents, Kingsbury Creek residents who were never informed of this project for oversight and input. Thank you. Any other members of the public who want a minute or two before we move forward? Thank you. Is there anyone online? Hearing none? Mr. Haney, you were going to say something? Uh, yes, the uh, I'm sorry, we've had some comments since then. Uh, Mr. Mersinski, your, your motion was to move forward and also hold a public uh, workshop, correct? Yes. Okay, yeah, I would second that. And hold those guys responsible for making sure that this is done right and we don't put any water into Kingsbury Creek until we're assured that it's not going to be a big impact. That so I, stop it there if we have to. I, I agree with your point about good communication. So if we could ask um, Mr. Hendricks and Mr. Sullivan to come back at a regular um, basis once the, the project begins. Every to, meeting. To, yeah, to every meeting. To just give us a, a, a brief overview of what's happening so that people can tune in via Zoom if they don't want to be here in person and can get a clear understanding of, um, of what's happening. If we need to post things on the web uh, under our project tab, I think that's a real smart idea as well. My caveat is uh, your night meeting on the second of the month, I teach at Hammond, so oh, that's right. I only make morning meetings. People, but Jay will help you. If yeah. people call you, call them back. <laughs> All right. So we have the motion. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the project with those restrictions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion is carried. Thank, thank you, everyone. Should we take a quick recess? Or yeah, if you need to, sure. Anyone need a bath? Yeah, you are. Um, I'm good with that, but you might okay. want to wait till people. All right, we'll we'll give everyone uh, a minute or two to um, leave, and we'll get moving with the meeting. Before you break, could I ask you to amend your motion to remove the laterals so there's no issue with those? Oh, make the motion, yes, so we remove those laterals. Before? Very good, Randy. Yeah, thank you. I didn't think you were awake. Can we consider that? Yeah. It, so, it, it, we, we, we can make it. The yeah. Assembly amendment that the laterals will be, be removed. Yes. Thank yes. you. I would make that motion. And, and a second. And then a motion to take a break. <laughs> we're just taking a break so everyone can clear. We're going to keep on going. <laughs> Okay. All right, if you're, if you're leaving the meeting, if you could go to the hallway so we can resume. So I would make that motion that we uh, insist that the laterals are removed. Yeah. Second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So the laterals have been amended, Shaw yes. and Diane? Yes, okay. So we've amended the, to include the lateral removal. All right, next on the agenda. Um, we are at 10C, Consider Construction Inspection Services of Format of U.S. States. Jay Sullivan. Yes, good afternoon, Commissioners. Yeah, I'm here to uh, ask permission, well, ask for you to approve the contract for the inspection services for the MetaView construction project. Motion to approve. Second. Support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we had we had an amended um, uh, 11A, consider proposed purchase agreement for $135,000 for the parcel next to the Michigan City MS base and the secondary uh, purchase of property on Wabash subject to financing approval by the County Council. Motion to approve. A second, and I would just say I'm very pleased that uh, we went out for some uh, additional bids on this property so we could do everything uh, in the spirit of state law. We have a motion and a second to approve the, um, uh, the purchase agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Consider a memorandum of understanding between the Sheriff's Department and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms to permit the department to join the ATF task force. Sheriff Boyd. Oh, um, I'm sorry, before we get to that, uh, was that uh, they had also asked verbally to add to the agenda some authority to consider the back parcel by the EMS. At yes. least. Was that part of the motion? So as well? secondary parcel, we call Great. it. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. Yes. Good yeah. afternoon, now. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, here to ask. Are you eating lunch, sir? <laughs> we taking the liberty of ordering some in, so you want to stand by and be <laughs> All right. Um, 
so uh, we're asking your approval for us to uh, participate in a memorandum of agreement with the Bureau of uh, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. This will be one of our drug investigators who works for the Port County Drug Task Force, and this will pay for any overtime, travel expenses, any reimbursements. If there's any out-of-county, out-of-state travel in regard to any of those investigations, which is nice for us, it will allow us to deputize have one of our deputies deputized so we can enforce any federal uh, firearms uh, laws, which is really important because most of our drug investigations have a firearms nexus, and that will be really important that they can a, a violator can be charged with a firearm violation. Motion to approve. Thank you. Uh, yes, it, Sheriff, if you wouldn't mind just very briefly uh, updating us on the other portion of that, that this wouldn't have anything to do with some of the shenanigans that we hear, have here going on up in uh, up in D.C. as far as um, what your deputies would act, deputy would actually be engaged in. Yeah, um, specifically Commissioner Haney did call and ask. He had some concerns that if this would be where we would be going into gun shops, um, investigating gun shops, no, this is specific to uh, investigations involving our drug task force, uh, and this certainly would not have anything to do with confiscation of any weapons whatsoever unless it's part of a criminal investigation, and they're being taken pursuant to a criminal arrest, a criminal violation. Thank you, Sheriff. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Sheriff's Department and the Bureau, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms to uh, permit the department to join the ATF task force, and we believe the collaboration is uh, always good in law enforcement. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, next on the um, agenda, consider renewal of contract between the Sheriff's Department with Peter B. Wood, Esquire, for training and legal advice regarding police procedures. Sheriff Wood. Yes, and this is just a renewal of our agreement that we've had in place uh, for a number of years, um, and it is for specialized training and for legal advice with uh, matters that are specific to law enforcement issues. It's been really important over the last several years. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion, a second, to approve the renewal of the contract uh, between the Sheriff's Department and um, Mr. Wood. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Consider contract renewal with FSSA to provide Medicaid coverage for jail, ma jail inmates as well as coordinate benefit coverage for offenders transitioning back into the community. Sheriff Wood. And uh, just as you described, this is an agreement between the Indiana Family, Family and Social Services Administration so that we can have Medicaid coverage for those incarcerated inmates. This is the same agreement that we've had in place for a number of years. Uh, the only caveat here, uh, and I've talked with the county attorney regarding this, is that we just got late yesterday, yesterday afternoon this contract, but they didn't fill out the necessary information such as LaPorte County um, and uh, the signatory for the president of the commission. With that being said, I, I think I would recommend that we just move forward with your vote of support, and then once the FSSA provides us with that copy, then we can come to you for uh, your signature. But we need to act on this because the window is closing. We just got this, uh, uh, this um, contract or agreement yesterday, and as of about a week ago, we only had 14 days to sign it. So no fault of ours, but with the state of Indiana, we, we need to act on this quickly so we can recoup the medical coverage of the inmates that we house here that have medical needs. Let me move to approve. Yeah, motion to approve, subject to review. Um, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract renewal uh, to cover Medicaid coverage for jail inmates. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Sheriff. Um, you're still standing, huh? <laughs> yes. All right. Consideration of policy changes to the county health insurance for retirees that would make Sheriff Merritt deputies eligible for county health insurance if eligible for full retirement uh, pension benefits at age 50 with 20 years of service. And this will be Chief Hague that will describe this. Good afternoon, Commissioners. If I could approach to provide you some information, please. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, this is something that we've been working with for quite some time. We've kind of found like a, a problem with the current policy that the that county uh, referenced retiree insurance. Current LaPorte County policy states that any employee that was hired before February 1st of 2005 could retire and take the county's uh, health insurance with them when they retired. 
if they had 20 years of service and they were 55 years of age, and the retiree would only pay a third of the premium, and that the individual must transition to Medicare or Medicaid when they became eligible, and any employee hired after February 1st of 2005 had to have 25 years of service and must meet a minimum age of 60 years of age, and they would pay half of the premium. And again, they must transition to Medicare or Medicaid when they become eligible. And this kind of follows PERF guidelines um, with the retiring in a PERF. We at the Sheriff's Office and our, our, our Merit Division have our own pension system where we're not on PERF. And our pension system allows a deputy to retire at 50 years of age with 20 years of service. So we've got a gap there that a deputy that was hired excuse me, before 2005, must now wait five additional years before he can think about retiring if he needs to take the insurance. A deputy that was hired after 2005 must, must wait or must stick around for an additional 10 years before he's eligible to, to retire and take the county's health insurance. Uh, we also have a problem with a deputy who is hired at the age of 21 and 22 years of age he only can max out his pension at 32 years of service, and that puts him at the age of 53, 54. And again, he would have to, a deputy would have to stay another two or seven years beyond his 32 years of service before he can even think about becoming eligible for the county's retiree health insurance. What we're proposing is that the commissioners make a, a, a change, an addendum to the current policy that allows any merit officer who has the 50 years of age, 20 years of service to be eligible to retire as they would with their pension and be able to, to leave with the county's health insurance uh, policy as it states. Uh, we don't feel that this would be all that burdensome to the county. Um, currently, out of the 66 merit deputies, only five fall into that 50 to 55 years of age and have 20 or 20 plus years of service. Out of that, I don't foresee all five just packing up shop and retiring right away. So uh, there is going to be a cost to the county. We're aware of that. Uh, we don't think it's going to be all that great. That cost is going to be dependent on how many of these deputies uh, decide to retire and, and, and take the county's health insurance. Some of them may retire and not need to take the county's health insurance. So that's what we're, we're asking uh, for support with. We're going to approach the council as well because there is a cost to the county on this. Speaking with Barb Mossman, this was presented uh, to the insurance committee, which got support. Uh, commission, or council president, uh, Mr. Novak, is also in support of this uh, uh, change as well. So we're here today to ask you to, for your motion to support the changes policy. Our merit board and yeah, supported as well too. Thank you. I see Ms. Mossman is here, and so is Mr. Novak. So if anyone has comments, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, Barb Mossman, I just wanted to state, um, with regards to the county's general policy on retirement, it is age 55 with 15 years of service. The employee will be paying half of those premium costs. So, and uh, Mr. Higa is correct. He has the support from the insurance committee. We had discussed this, I think, several years ago. Um, we kind of just hit a dead wall with that, and so at this point in time, there is support from the, our committee. Thank you. Are there Any is, we, questions? Yeah, we discussed this on the uh, committee as well. Um, it, it's a unique circumstance that a handful of handful of merit deputies fall into. Um, you know, after, after giving 20, 25, you know, 30 years of service. Um, it's something that, uh, that that we decided was uh, was worthwhile to do. So I would move to uh, allow you to approach the uh, council for uh, for funding and final move. Second. We have a motion and a second to support um, the policy change in the county health insurance for sheriff department merit deputies who are uh, approaching retirement age. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a uh, considered memorandum of understanding between the Sheriff's Office and the Federal Bureau of Investigation for the use of their firearms range and training facility. Sheriff Boyd. Yes, this is um, a, a memorandum of understanding so the FBI can utilize a range as they have for at least the last 25 to 30 years um, and that um, they are assuming liability for any, any training that they do while they're utilizing a range and they do share with some of the cost 
of the operating our range. So it's a good partnership that we've enjoyed. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the memorandum, uh, memorandum of understanding between the Sheriff's Office and the FBI uh, for use of the firearms range. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Consider retroactive approval of Commission President and Council President's Declaration of Public Health and Safety Emergency requiring emergency repair, repairs to the grandstand at the Lippert County Fairgrounds. Mr. Lewandowski. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Yeah, this is for the work that we're doing to the grandstands at the fairgrounds that were found in need of desperate attention from an uh, independent firm that was hired. Motion to approve. Second. And a second to approve. The um, uh, emergency declaration signed previously, this is a retroactive approval, uh, signed previously by Council President Novak and Commission President Sheila Matias, declaring a public health and safety emergency requiring emergency repairs to the grandstands at the LaPorte County Fairgrounds. Uh, basically, we knew that this is something that had to be done. We heard some public comment about this previously, so at this time, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you so much. We're getting there. Uh, next on the agenda, consider reinstating positions of the IT director, the facilities director, county planner, and commission executive assistant from policy making annual appointments to prior classification job status. Mr. Friedman, could you explain the history behind this? Because this was long before most sure. of us were here. Uh, in 2013, there was some move made by the Commission at that time in the hopes that uh, by reclassifying these positions, it might make a difference in terms of some of the pay that is accorded each. Uh, the pay is not jumped in any measurable fashion, and so the, the, uh, uh, the, the point being at that time was to, as I understood what the Commissioners were seeking to do by putting them in the annual appointment list, uh, was to get an increased salaries. Uh, and I think the, uh, the, the increases have been measured and have not varied as a result of being in the annual appointment list. And I think there was some desire uh, expressed by uh, uh, Commissioner Brzezinski to put this on the agenda to re uh, reclassify back to the prior status uh, so that those are not uh, in the group of policy-making annual appointments and are simply back in the normal uh, job classified status that they were in prior to 2013. So they're not policy making positions. That's right. right. That's right. Whereas you have and reserve the right uh, uh, to have an annual appointment list of those that are deemed either confidential or policy makers, and that is a group that has traditionally been on there for decades, and so that change was made in 13. All this would be would be to restore those three positions to where they were prior to 2013. Okay. Motion to reinstate these positions for IT director, county planner, commissioner's executive assistant, and facilities director. So that's a motion? That's a motion. Okay. That was a uh, motion. Uh, May I speak, please, ma'am? Madam Commissioner? Please. Sure. Um, I understand that I'm fully supportive of reinstating the IT director, commissioner's secretary, and uh, Mitch Bishop. but. The facilities manager was never on and in with that. He's always been in an appointed position. Obviously, he doesn't make policy either. Neither do I, and neither does uh, any other appointed. Mr. McGuire doesn't either. But uh, I, I, I can understand IT, and I can understand the commissioner's secretary. And when that was done, Rethel was my secretary, and when I left, uh, she was taken out, and they had Joyce Leon contact her on New Year's Eve that she would no longer have a job, and they put in who they wanted, which is wrong. Of course, we're an at-will state, and anybody, anybody can be fired at will. But I still, uh, you know, admire Darlene highly, and, of course, Mr. Bishop. He's brought a lot into this county, and I admire him, and, of course, Nobody works harder than Diane over here. She's a, a man. But uh, facilities director's always been appointed. And he wasn't in that first uh, go-around when they took these people out. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Uh, actually, uh, uh, Director Houston, uh, and former Commissioner Houston, uh, has, a, has a very valid point there. That's actually an excellent uh, Excellent point there. Um, I, I, 
I would uh, I would support what is uh, what was originally agended here for today uh, to reinstate those former positions, uh, the three there, uh, IT director, county planner, and uh, commissioner's executive assistant. Uh, but you know, to 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 lump that in, I think we would at that point need to, if we're going to look at facilities director as well, we need to basically move everyone almost, you know, from all these different ones under the, under that same umbrella, if that's the gist of it. So as the motion as it stands, no other than support. All right. I will second the motion as it stands. So we're, right now we have a motion and a second to consider reinstating the positions of IT director, county planner, and commissioner executive assistants. We are adding a facilities director from the policymaking and their appointments to the prior class, classified job status. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Um, next on the agenda, I consider renewal of the USI on call contract. And I'm not sure that that is a for the primary election, May 3rd, 2022. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the 2020 primary election polling locations. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Consider positive pay contract with Horizon Bank. Uh, this one, we had somebody come in, they went into our bank, and they tried to, they tried to push a check through that was not it was not our check. They tried to make it look like ours, but it was not. Um, at that point, that's when our bank decided that we were the only account left without the positive pay. And so they are, basically, they have my account frozen until this is handled. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, uh, commissioners, I've reviewed the proposed contract. As uh, Ms. Stevens indicated, we've got a freeze on that particular account, the, uh, the Odyssey account that is used and the uh, checks that are issued. Um, and uh, it was an extensive contract. We've gone through it and are recommending approval so that the, uh, we can get on what is known as positive pay through Horizon, get that account unfrozen, and continue moving forward. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to um, uh, um, approve the positive pay contract with Horizon Bank. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion has Thank you. Thank you so much. Motion has carried. Next on the agenda, Commissioner's comment, Mr. Haney. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it's, I'm going to try and keep this one really brief. Uh, it's, it's a lot to report on since we had a uh, extra Wednesday uh, thrown into the end of last month, but uh, just to try and keep it as short as possible. Um, we've been everywhere from Michigan City, the lacrosse to Westville, to back out to Hudson Lake, uh, checking on a number of things, uh, visiting again up in uh, the Michigan City Courthouse. Um, as well as uh, our emergency operations center. Um, I think from the Kankakee Yellow River Basin meeting to everything else. Um, Thank you. 
and the Republican Party chairman anywhere near our program voting machines, no matter, uh, not because of the looks there, but however, if you'd like to review the tape, the, the video you can see this, uh, the Republican chairman has been in the office uh, on a Saturday, as a matter of fact, the 12th of uh, March, and I've uh, been told by the people who work there, this is a regular thing. And I need to inform uh, the third and the Republican chairman that this is not only a bad idea, I believe it could possibly be uh, a little. I don't think the Republican chairman should be in the court's office in, in the midst of an election when the uh, machines are in there being broken. It's not right. <laughs> so you did. You said that it never happened, but that's not. Uh, they expand to 30 
uh, employees in the springtime and the summer. Their operating hours are 7 to 5.30, and that is seasonal, seasonal hours. They have a competitive compensation of $14 per hour for part-time workers and $15 an hour for full-time, and they have an incentive bonus plan. They also have numerous mid-level positions, and they are currently hiring for general labor, sales associates, growing facility, uh, CDL delivery drivers, and non-CDL drivers. And to view their open positions, you can go to bloomsgreenhouse.com, and um, you can find their application and some more information. They will be open for the season on April 15th, and we'll have their annual open house on the 23rd and 24th. We will be our uh, vendors, prize, and raffles and free popcorn. So we are going to put this on our website. We have a, a location on our website where all the local county works uh, companies are. So if you are looking for a job or if you know someone who's looking for employment, go to that go to that um to that uh, Place on our web page, and you can all the temporary links on how to, how to uh, apply for jobs, what positions are open, and information on some of our awesome local employers. So, with that, I thank everyone for your patience. We had a robust and interesting meeting today, and I really appreciate everyone being here. And, Mark, we're going to look around soon. Thank you for sticking with us. So, thank you. Good afternoon.